Many consider it the biggest disaster to hit the Rapid City community. As we approach the 40th anniversary of the 1972 Rapid City flood, some of the survivors are taking this time to share their stories and firsthand accounts of the events of that tragic June night. Perhaps one of the most heartbreaking is the story of Ronald and LaVon Masters, two parents who lost three children in their fight for survival that night. Black Hills Fox reporter Brendan Medina brings us their story. It's like somebody turned the faucet on and it just started pouring. Almost 40 years later, time has not diminished the memories the Masters have of the night that changed their lives forever. Theirs is a story of survival, a story of a family torn apart by tragedy, but most importantly, a story of the power faith has in times of unthinkable loss. As the water level rose out of Rapid Creek and into their home along Jackson Boulevard on June 9, 1972, they knew for the safety of their young family, it was time to leave. Here we are standing trying to decide what to do and we heard water coming in the lower level and it already pushed out the windows. We went down to look and it was just filling, filling the lower the level. basement for your yes. lower level very yeah. quickly. With their five children, three boys and two girls still in pajamas, they trudged through ankle deep water in the pitch black night to reach the family vehicle. We backed out just to... We had just backed out just a few feet, turned there, and turned right onto Jackson Boulevard. To and onto to, the bridge. And onto the bridge. Unbeknown to us, the dam had burst, and the first wall of water caught us. All we needed was three or four more seconds, and we'd have been ahead of that first wall of water. That wall of water quickly engulfed the car and the seven members of the Masters family inside. I remember my face against the, the ceiling of the vehicle. And I remember saying at that point, God, I never thought this is the way I was going to die. The masters described that moment as feeling like an eternity, but one they still cling on to, to this day. Steve said, Dad, it's all in God's hands. And that's and, the last word that we heard from Steve. And then our son Jonathan gave me a tight hug, one of the, that he liked to do to his mom. And he said, I love you, mom. And those were the last words we heard from our two older sons. Ronald was able to escape the vehicle now pinned against a tree. He pulled his wife out of an open window and brought her on top of the vehicle. He felt inside the car for any of his children he could still pull out, finding the leg of his oldest daughter, Karen. And she had Tim, our little two-year-old, in her arms. And when I pulled him through that narrow opening, she lost him. The rest of that night was spent fighting to survive in the rushing water, clinging to trees and anchoring their feet on the submerged vehicle. The couple recalled singing church hymns as they struggled to fight through the night in the ice cold water, but as the water receded, a tiny voice echoed from the vehicle. And at this point, our daughter, Joanne, uh, who was how old at that time, honey? 10. She was 10. She came floating across there and came right up to my face. Mm -hmm. I will never forget the look in her eyes, as you can imagine. And the first thing she said to me is, Daddy, God wants me to be a missionary. And I said to her, Honey, he surely must. He surely must. As dawn broke, the family, once seven, now four, was rescued by the National Guard and taken to Sioux San Hospital for treatment. They've spent the years since the flood speaking to groups around the world on dealing with grief. The couple says it's their faith in God that allowed them to survive that night, as well as the years since the tragedy. And they also say their three sons would be proud of all the lives they've touched, telling their story of that dark, cold night 40 years ago. 85% of couples that lose a child often divorce because they can't be there for each other. You have to find your way. And fortunately, we had our faith in God. And that's what brought us through. For Black Hills Fox, I'm Brenda Medina. Such brave people to tell that story. Well, groups are doing their part to make the memories of that night in 1972 a permanent part of the Black Hills landscape. Today, the U.S. Geological Survey dedicated one of several flood markers around the area. Those markers give people a way to visualize just how high the water levels were the night of June 9, 1972. With that, well, I'm confident that the markers accurately reflect the peak discharge that happened. I mean, the, the flow you know, went up quickly to that stage and then came back down. But, you know, the peak stage is the one that is most destructive. But what those high water marks don't tell you is how fast the water was flowing. 
The other markers are set for Storybook Island, the post offices in both Rapid City and Keystone, the Canyon Lake Dam, Founders Park, and the Journey Museum. Another unit from the